So one of the main things you must include for P10 and P11 is reference to things such as amplitude, phase shift, frequency and RMS value. Um, we're looking at a sine wave here. I'm just going to make this a little bit more spread out by using the seconds per division button. And we're going to look first of all at amplitude. Now amplitude is the, the maximum shift in the positive direction here, this one here. So there's, that's where the signal starts. That's, it, that's what we call the um, neutral line, zero volt line. If we wanted to measure the amplitude of this signal, what we would do, we would, we would select our cursors, our cursor button up here. This one's on time at the moment, so to change that, we would select voltage there. And now the cursors go horizontal, and I can use these two controls to adjust them. So the first control here stays where it is, and the second control moves up like so until we come to the peak there. So you can clearly see the peak and we see delta Y, the change in Y is 4.88 volts which means that either my function generator isn't set up correctly or my cursor skills aren't as good as I thought they were. Coming back to the cursor we can change the cursor back over to time so at the moment this is on voltage and change it over to time and once again very quickly what we'll do we'll go from one negative peak or trough if that's what you want to call it to the other and that's that will give us the amount of time it takes this sine wave to do one full cycle there just like that delta x and that gives us a time of 0. 984 milliseconds. So the periodic time from my measurement anyway is 0 0.984 milliseconds. That's what periodic time is, the amount of time it takes for the sine wave to complete one full cycle between there and there. Frequency is the amount of full cycles that occur within one second. So if you were to divide 0 0.984 milliseconds into one second, you would have a frequency of, and we'll do this one on the calculator. Remember, milli is 10 to the minus 3. So on our calculator here, we get 1 divided by 0.123984 equals. So the frequency of this waveform is 1016 Hertz. The RMS value of a sine wave is an indication of its heating effect when compared with a DC supply. To measure the RMS or to calculate the RMS of a sine wave is very simple. We simply measure the amplitude which was 4.88 volts in this case and then multiply that by 0 0.707. To measure the RMS value, the root mean square value of any AC sine wave, it's the same procedure. The peak value times 0 0.707. So for our one, going back to the calculator, so the root mean square value of this sine wave will be 3.45 volts. That's the DC equivalent of the sine wave. Finally, we have phase shift and we can use the we can use the time cursors again. This time we're going to go from the input peak to the output peak. Remember this is the applied voltage here and this is the voltage measured across the capacitor. So once again cursor controls, you know where they are now. And we try to hit the peak of the input waveform there and the output waveform there. And I think that's roughly about right. So they're out of phase with each other and we could calculate how much they're out of phase. First thing we'd need to know is the change in time between them. 
So this has got a change in x, change in the x dimension of 0 0.216 milliseconds. So we can draw in a sine wave, and that's our input sine wave, and then we can draw in our capacitor sine wave here, which I'll probably not do very well, but it doesn't really matter. Not for the purpose of this anyway. So there's my capacitor sine wave. Sorry, they're both the same colour. And we're measuring the time between this peak and this peak here. That's what we did on the oscilloscope. We're measuring that time. And according to my measurements anyway, that was 0 0.216 milliseconds. Like this. And that would look like this in real numbers. Those of you that like real numbers. 216 seconds. The sine wave itself should be set at 1 kilohertz. So that means the sine wave takes 1 millisecond to complete. one cycle. And we know, or we note, that one cycle is equal to 360 degrees. What we really need to do is find out what fraction this is to this. So the easy way to do that is 0.216 divided by 1 is equal to 0.216 and therefore, obviously, <laughs> 0.216 times 360 is equal to 77.76 degrees. So the phase shift is equal to 77.6 degrees according to my measurements. And to get a rough idea of phase shift, you could do that with any sine wave input and output. It works equally well. To work out frequency, we take the periodic time, T, and divide that into 1. To work out RMS, the RMS value of a waveform, its root mean square value of a sine wave, is this part here, which gives the same heating effect as a DC supply. It's the same formula for any sine wave. We take the peak value. or the amplitude, if that's what you want to call it, that's the bit between there and there, which for our circuit was 4.88 volts, and we multiply it by 0 0.707.